New, 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 new. So, uh, Adabox. Here it is. I could tell you, here's some stats. We have less than 100 openings. Less. I know, because I got an alert, too. We get alerts. I got an alert. So, we have less than 100. So, we're a little ahead. Um... We're going to be shipping in April, so you do have a little time, but not a lot of time. Yep, there was a little bit of a delay uh, due to COVID. We have all the parts ready for Ada Box, but they're stuck and yeah. they can't ship out. Um, so it'll be maybe a couple weeks later than expected on this Ada Box, but don't worry, it'll we'll make it it'll be fine. The best so this Adabox does ever. give you a little bit more time to subscribe, but you are going to run out of time. So yes, anyways, there's hundred, but lots also, of hundred slots left. Also, when the slots are out, it doesn't matter. You know, when we ship, if the slots are done, yeah. the slots are done. Okay, first up. Okay, first up, we've got some fun, quick Stemma QT cable action here. This is a Grove connector to a JSTSH, also known as a this Quick to that. or that Stemma to QT. Yeah. We have the JSTPH. This is, this is like a, I don't know the name of this connector. This is actually kind of like a custom connector, yeah. which is why uh, we got this cable from Sparkfly. You want to zoom in? Boop. I think I kind of like this. You want it that way? This is you? good. This is good. A good amount. Okay. okay. So, um... Yeah, so this is a Grove uh, Feather Wing Shield that we've got here just as a demo. And you'll see that this one is the clock data 3-volt ground uh, port. And so we've plugged in this cable with the little latchy bit here into the port. And it latches in place. And on the other end, we can plug in any STEM IQT or quick sensor. That's cool. The only thing I want to warn people about is there are some Grove shields, especially for like the Arduino Uno or the Mega maybe, that would have five volt power instead of three volt power, um, in which case you can definitely still use STEM IQT because we have a little regulator here that converts any input into three volts. But if you're using a SparkFun quick board, um, just be aware you might have to set it to be three volts. It's like we want to warn people so they don't plug in a three volt sensor into a five volt. Um, it's not an issue if you're using any of our um, if we ports, because you can see on the back, they all say VLogic VCC 3 to 5 volts, uh, but it's something I should mention. Uh, that said, if you have, uh, it goes both ways too. If you have um, a feather or like, you know, this, this clue board, for example, I'll show it off on the overhead very carefully. Uh, this has a uh, JST SH Stemma QT or quick sensor on it. You can then plug in growth sensors. So it goes both ways. So it's a nice little converter cable, uh, easy to make all of your quick and growth projects work so well together. All right, speaking of. Speaking of, another little breakout, this is handy. This is a uh, breakout to a dual JST SH breakout, also from SparkFun, shown here. I can't really show it any better than the demo. You can solder some header onto it, uh, female header, male header, plug into a breadboard, and it breaks out two JST SH connectors, and then you can plug in any of our sensors. So it's, um, or if you have a board that doesn't have a um, STEMA QT, connector on it, uh, you can make it so by, again, uh, soldering in those connectors. So All right. very handy, uh, breadboard friendly. It's a, a nice little uh, accessory. Next up, we had Pete Warden on our show. He was talking about this book, and now we have the book Yay! in the store. It's so tiny ML. It's just great. I love the, the graphics. It's a thick book, too. I'm going to hold this up. Yeah, this is a book. It's chunky. Yeah. Let me get this chunkiness. This is like a huge book, and they wrote this in like six months. They were they flew yeah. by it. So you want to show it on the overhead? Chunky, and it covers um, using TensorBoard, using uh, Colab, using Arduino, um, the SparkFun Edge Board, the Arduino Nano 33 BLE. I think are the two main boards that are in this. Yeah, um, but I have some good news for you. Our so, guides show how to use our yeah, stuff. Yeah, so. Um, this is a good book to get started if you want to uh, have what I think the best hardware is. You can use our stuff, and this is still a good reference. It's still the, the code yeah. is the same, but what you can do is if you're reading this and you're like, oh, wait, I have an Adafruit Edge board or I have a Clue or whatever or a Circuit Playground Bluefruit, just go to the learn.adafruit.com website, and then you can follow along our guide, which is yeah. basically this the same kind of content, but in it's not as explained. Like this is obviously yeah. This is way say, than the when guide. people say, well, "How do I get started with like machine learning?" Pick up an edge badge and do our guides just for the first like okay in five minutes I can get it to just do something get the demos, and yeah. then get this book and then really start you know tweaking on the models that you can uh, start to make and then also check out Teachable Machine from Google, which I think is um, one of the most helpful things for quickly making your yeah. own models for. Um, devices like, you know, Raspberry Pi and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, next up. And this is why that code was what it was. Rock block. Yeah. Okay. So we have uh, twofer. We have the rock block modem 
with an FTDI cable. Yeah. And don't try to register that one. This one is mine, so I've already registered and it. And do you want me to, um, and you want to show this cable thing too? Um, yeah, it's, they, they go together. So they this is together. the cable, right. breakout cable that goes with the rock block, so you can use it on a breadboard. Okay, so let so. me show this on the What overhead. is this thing? It looks like a GPS or something. I know. Like, this is kind of interesting. What so is it? <laughs> you want to ask what is it again? What is it? Okay. This is a Iridium satellite modem. So this is, it looks like a GPS antenna, but it actually um, connects to the 66 low Earth orbit Iridium satellites that are circling the globe right now. And you can send short messages, uh, like a couple hundred bytes, maybe, maybe not even a hundred bytes. I can't, I can't remember the exact number, but it's definitely not, it's about a text message worth. Um, and this is the modem. Uh, once you register the modem, you can then um, send messages to and from this modem anywhere on earth and when i say anywhere i mean it like literally anywhere on this great earth if you can see the sky you have the antenna pointed at the sky you can send and receive messages within a few minutes so if you're doing mountaineering if you're doing um oceanography if you're going to be in the middle of nowhere if you're you know doing um ngo projects in places that do not have cellular access um this will let you send and receive messages and uh, to get you started, it comes with an FTDI cable with a USB connector. And this means that you can easily follow along with the tutorials to send and receive your first messages through the AT command set using your computer. So you get that, you know, you, you register it through the Rock 7 website, you connect to your computer, you can just practice sending messages back and forth because they're not cheap, so you want to make sure your code's working. And then, once you're ready to implement it with the microcontroller, you could use this cable, you can use the... Um, the connectors on the end or of course you can cut this off and solder directly to them either way and this exposes like there's a 5 volt power there's a lipo power input there's uart and then there's a flow control for the uart there's also signal there you know there's a pinout documentation all that stuff is online so this lets you um, really control the modem through an embedded project so you can use it with a raspberry pi circuit python arduino anything it's just a uart running at about 19.2 kilobon. So the only thing I got to warn people about is it's, it's satellite, so it's a little different than cellular or Wi-Fi. First off, you can't use it anywhere in the world, but you have to pay for it. So there is a monthly registration that you have to pay. It's only maybe like 15 bucks or so. Don't ch check out exactly the price because I, I can't remember off the top of my head. And you have to pay per message, and it's like 10 cents a message. Um, so you have to have both a a monthly subscription and also a per message subscription for sending and receiving. It's not that expensive compared to how expensive it used to be, but it's not free. So, you know, if you're comparing it with cellular where you can usually get, you know, you have to pay for cellular, but oftentimes you get a plan that's like all SMSs are inclusive or, you know, your data plan is gigabytes. This is not gigabytes. It's not even megabytes. This is the kilobytes level of data, um, but it works anywhere in the world. Second, it does have some basic location triangulation, but it's not a GPS. So if you want to have it uh, send exact location, um, you would have to get a separate GPS module, connect it up to your microcontroller or Raspberry Pi or whatever, read that, and then send the GPS coordinates over this. Because it will give you some location, but the location isn't perfect. Third, uh, you have to register it through Rock7, which is an Iridium reseller. So they make these modules, and part of the deal is they're selling them at a really good price because they're expecting you to go and register on their website and then you know, have a monthly subscription fee and per message fee. If you want to use it with another Iridium provider, you can, but you'll have to contact Rock7 to unlock it, which is like 50 or 60 bucks. So as long as you're aware of all these things, um, this is a very, it's a more expensive than cellular or Wi-Fi, but for what you're getting, it's very inexpensive. I mean, the fact that for a couple hundred dollars, you can send messages anywhere in the world is amazing. Um, and the, the price per message is not that expensive, uh, as long as you're, you're putting your data together in the right way. So um, I love it. It's really small. We're going to do some projects with CircuitPython and the Clue maybe, sending data around. But uh, a great way for any developer, scientist, student, or engineer to start using satellite communication. All right. And then starts the show besides you, Lady Ada, Stella, our CFO, yeah. and the community and our employees Stella is... Stella is for sale. This. The Bonsai Buckaroo. This coming is coming soon. soon. Yeah. 
Again, um, a lot of our circuit boards are in China and they're currently quarantined, during COVID, not the PCBs, but the people who are sending and making them. And so um, just to keep things going, we're putting in some coming soons so people know what we would have released this week if we got in our circuit boards. Um, so this is the uh, Bonsai Buckaroo and it's an add-on for micro bits or clues, works for both. And it has these five screws on the bottom that bolt on to your clue or micro bit. And then you get a speaker. Yeah, let's just show it. You want to show it? Let's just show it. Yeah, I got it hooked up to this plant. So let me let me hook it up here. I got this plant over here. Let me bring this back out. And then that's good. Okay. It's a good demo. Yeah, it's a good demo. Let me give this away. So it's got space stuff, got plant stuff. I All know. Right. Space space. Land scene plants. here tonight. Okay, good. All right, so you bolt um, the five bolts on, and this makes it nice and secure. You get um, a, a speaker, so the clue has a buzzer, but the micro bit does not. And for some projects where you might not want to have a motor, you just want to have it notify you if like the plant needs watering, um, you can have a speaker go off. It's connected to pin zero, which is uh, in make code, the default speaker pin. We also have a three volt motor port. So this is a surface mount terminal block, and you can connect this to here. I've got a, a little motor sitting at the bottom of this glass with um, some tubing. Now I don't have the tubing going to the plant because this poor um, plant, I don't want to overwater it <laughs> while I'm doing the demo because I, I like this plant. It's a very nice plant, good plant. Um, and then on the clue, for example, we have these two pads for the pin one, power and ground, and I'm using that to measure the resistance between these two nails. So let's say I want to simulate what it would be like if it wasn't in conductive soil, if it was in dry soil. When I remove the nail, you'll see the resistance goes up. It's basically like infinite resistance. And then the motor turns on every few seconds. And you can see over here, water is getting pumped out. So not all at once, just little, little bits of water. And then when the plant is nice and moist again, the resistance goes down and the pump turns off. So this is a really great way for kids and students to learn how to um, read sensor data and then maybe display it and then perform a robotic action such as The this fact pump. that you could just do this on live video is amazing. That means it works. Yeah, it yeah. totally works. That's, it's, how, that's how easy it is. It's like your bug just, output. Yeah. And you can use it with again with Microbit, with MIC code, or you can use it with Clue, or Circuit yeah, Python. One of same, the things, same design. Since we have a Microbit shape thing, we're like, oh, well, we should probably do some accessories. Yeah, now it makes you kind of excited. This one's like, like oh yeah, like this is something that we would want for uh, a Microbit or a Clue. So we're like, oh, let's just do it. Yeah. So it's coming soon. It's really simple, but it yeah. works really well. And I like that it, it's, it's no soldering is required. You just screw some things in, you plug some things yeah. on, you put the tubing on the, the pump, you put it in a cup of water, and now you can start experimenting. This is what the final silk's gonna look like. Yeah, it's nice by Phil B. Yeah. Um, why is there a watermelon there? I don't know, I'll tell you later. Yep. And then um, you know, attach your motor, or you can have it beep instead if you want to have just like a, a yeah. audio output something we wanted to make sure that there was accessibility options for people who are coding maybe they can't you know visually see leds or display you could have an uh, auditory alarm as well so this is coming soon uh sign up and uh, as soon as we get those circuit boards we are going to crank these out because i know people want to do planting projects for the spring yeah coming up soon that's new products okay. new, 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 new.